Okay, thank you. Uh, good afternoon to those in Europe. Uh, good morning and good evening to those all around the world. Uh, as someone said, uh, my name is Juan Navas. I work for uh, Thales Corporate Engineering and I make part of a team that provides support, coaching and expertise to operational projects and also research and development projects on systems engineering process, methods and tools, and in particular uh, on uh, Arcadia and uh, Capella uh, tool. So um, today I would like to present you a brand new add-on to Capella uh, that will allow you to enrich and vigorize your models in a very easy way. So this add-on will allow you to do three things. Uh, it will allow you to define the properties that will be applied to your model elements, following the vocabulary and the conventions of your own engineering domain. Uh, secondly, it will allow you to uh, set the values of these properties for each Capella model element. And finally, it will allow you to change the graphical style of the model elements following the value of these properties. So this add-on is called PBMT, which states from a property values management tool. And this tool has been developed and used extensively in Thales in the last years, and now we are opening it to uh, the Capella community so it can benefit from it and also contribute to its development. So before uh, presenting you this, uh, the features of the tool, uh, we will take some minutes to uh, tell you why this tool was developed and why it could be useful in your own engineering context. So uh, I told you I worked in Thales. Uh, Thales is a 65,000 people company uh, providing products and services in several industrial domains. Aerospace, space, ground transportation, defense, security, among others. Uh, each of these domains have their own specific engineering practices, their own specific conventions, and their own vocabulary, which in some cases can be quite different from one domain to another. Uh, in addition to that, Thales is present in is present in 56 countries in all continents. So th that means that the customers of our products and services also have quite heterogeneous practices, conventions and, of course, vocabularies. And it's not only about our customers. Uh, other stakeholders, such as regula regulatory authorities, may be quite different as well. So th that's where Arcadia and Capella play a very important role in our engineering effort. Uh, you may probably already know the Arcadia method and the Capella tool. Uh, if you don't, uh, this webinar will be a good opportunity to get an overview uh, and you will be able to, uh, well, later, check the videos in the Capella YouTube channel to get more information on, on that. Um, Arcadia and Capella provide us a structural engineering method for designing the architecture of complex systems that is common to all our engineers around the world. Secondly, it also provides us a workbench that is tightly integrated to the method, meaning that it will support you and guide you in your engineering effort and in particular during the architectural design of your systems. And finally, Arcadia and Capella have been already used, being used in many operational contexts in several industrial domains and it has proven its ability to be tailored to many specific constraints. So this webinar will focus in this latest feature of Arcadia and Capella as the PVMT tool is one of the tools, but not the only one, that contributes to the adaptability of Arcadia and Capella to several industrial domains. So we have decided to present you the main features of this PVMT tool through an example, uh, in order to allow you to project yourself on how these features may be used in your own context. Uh, we choose an industrial control system as an example. Uh, this kind of system is kind of classic systems. They receive data from uh, remote sensors measuring process variables such as pressure or temperature. Compare these with desired set points and derive command functions which are used to control a process 
to the final control elements, which can be control valves or pumps. Uh, systems such as this one is present in many industrial domains, including oil and gas, nuclear, space, and transportation. Projects leading to the development of an industrial control system, which we will call ICS uh, in this uh, webinar, uh, may involve several hundreds of engineers, uh, of course, depending on its size and complexity. In our case, we will only consider four roles. First one is the ICS architecture and engineering team, or people, I mean, could be one, pet, one person, uh, who is responsible for the architectural design and optimization of control systems. Um, major performance characteristics may include efficiency, load step response, mode and state transitions, open and closed loop response, etc. Uh, control loops, of course, may be analog, digital, or mixed signals. Uh, the components of the solutions may include a field smart instrumentation, programmable logic controllers or PLC, uh, supervisory control at data acquisition or SCADA, and distributed control system DCS and other kind of um, solutions, components and technologies. Second major role we will study in this, uh, we consider in this webinar is the process engineering team. Uh, this process engineering team provides the chemical process and equipment, of course, that are used to turn raw materials into an end product. It's responsible for designing, implementing uh, industrial process, especially continuous one, uh, within several industries, petrochemical, agriculture, mineral processing, advanced material, food, pharmaceutical, and a long, long, etc. Third role is safety engineering. Uh, it's an engineering discipline which assures that engineer systems provide acceptable level of safety uh, and assuring that a life critical system behaves as needed even when components fail. And the fourth one, of course, is uh, project managers, uh, which have the responsibility of the planning, procurement and execution of the project. So during this webinar, we will consider three of these four uh, roles and we will um, show you how this um, PDM2 tool uh, will help you on um, managing the, um, the discussions between these roles. Uh, the, the first thing um, the um, Arcadia method tells us is uh, to analyze the operational context of our system. In this case, uh, this is done, of course, in the operational analysis perspective, and in our, in our example, the context is the industrial process we intend to control. Uh, here is a thermal power station, uh, which is a power station in which heat energy is converted to electric power. This process is made of equipment, which are uh, modeled here as um, operational entities, uh, which perform specific activities. Uh, the first one is the boiler. Uh, it's responsible of heating the water it receives uh, from the heat exchanger. Um, uh, in order to do so, uh, it has a source of heat, an internal source of, source of heat, which can be coal, nuclear, fuel, or solar. Second one is uh, the, the heat exchanger. Uh, the heated water is, uh, from the boiler is sent to the heat exchanger. Uh, in which a heat transfer is performed and steam is produced. This steam spins a turbine, turbine which drives an electrical generator, which is connected to the electrical grid, to the right side. Uh, and after it passes to the, through the turbine, uh, the steam is condensed in a condenser and recycled where, to where it was heated, so the heat exchanger. Uh, after it passes through the heat exchanger, the water from the boiler is recycled as well. And in this process, there is a system at the left side uh, that only performs at emergency situations. And its mission is to inject boric acid uh, into the boiler to control the heating process. So uh, people from the nuclear domain here will recognize the principles, the basic principles of a pressurized water reactor a nuclear power plant. Uh, but it's not the, the same thing, of course. Uh, so in our example, uh, we will focus on a single operational process, uh, which is the one performed at emergency situations. 
The first job of the ICS architect will be to work with the process engineer and other uh, project actors to elucidate the needs on uh, its uh, ICS system. So uh, when the injection of boric, boric acid will take place, what are the conditions that will trigger the injection? What are the performance requirements? Will it be triggered manually or automatically? Will, it be, will it, there be some operators that will supervise the process? If so, how many? Uh, what are they responsible for? And there are many other questions that uh, will need to be answered in the next step of the Arcadia method, which is the system analysis perspective. So here we state that our ICS system will have two capabilities related to the operational process. Uh, it has to, uh, it would be uh, the, the responsible of the, the, the injection of the boric acid, controlled injection of boric acid. And uh, secondly, it will provide supervision interfaces to operators. These capabilities will involve some external actors. Uh, some of them have been already identified during the operational analysis, and others, such as the plant operator, have emerged while, while analyzing the needs. So the ICS will have four main functions that we see here um, and will be interfaced with the uh, four external actors, a plant operator at three of the equipment identified before. Uh, the functions is, uh, are uh, to acquire the process parameters, the set the process parameters, uh, control the values of the process parameters and provide supervision interfaces to the operator. There are two important things to note to the following of the, of the, um, the case study. Uh, first, the interfaces have been defined uh, and they concern status and pressure signals, which means that the instrumentation, the pressure sensors, the actuators, is out of the scope of our systems. The system only receives uh, signals, so digital or analog signals. And uh, secondly, uh, the boiler has its own means to control the heat production, which is the, the this function control heat production, of course. Um, and uh, but the status of this control uh, mechanical control means are sent to the ICS system. So we can start showing the uh, the, the three features of the PLEMT tool that I, I told you uh, just before. Uh, uh, at, the, at this point, the ICS architect is ready to work with the process engineer to capture the needs regarding the conditions at which the injection will take place. Uh, so we will, use, we will use the PDMT tool to create a set of properties related to this task and that will be applied to the model elements. So let me explain you uh, some uh, basics of the um, PVMT tool and uh, in particular the basic concepts behind the, the tool. Uh, first, a uh, Capella model uh, can be associated to, to several domain uh, properties model, uh, which is the, um, the, we define the set of properties that are related to a given domain. In our case, we will uh, build in the first uh, time uh, the, um, the properties related to the process domain. This domain properties model will contain one or several extensions, uh, which are a group of properties that can be applied on elements. And these extensions may have, uh, have a scope, one or several scopes, uh, define, which define uh, to which elements the properties can be applied. The extension also contains several properties, which are the properties we want to define, uh, and um, it, this, uh, this uh, concept defines the type of the property, which can be an enumeration, a boolean, an integer, a float a number. And, of course, it may be an enumeration, which is related directly to the uh, domain properties model. So, we will present you um, an example of a creation of a process domain. So, I will switch to my uh, Capella uh, environment and um, I will be able to, to show you uh, how to create a new domain but some basic operations on creating uh, the domain. So um, it's very easy to, uh, to open the, um, 
the PDMT um, view. So it is open here, but I show you how to uh, to, to to open it in the um, in the uh, Capella environment. Uh, to create uh, to add a new domain, simply name it. I will name it process domain, and after as I said, uh, process domain is related to uh, one or several uh, extensions. So, for instance, I will create an extension which is called um, a process interface. I'm interested in uh, process uh, interfaces between the system and uh, the equipment, the ICS system and the equipment. So the first thing I will need to, um, to specify is the scope of this uh, extension, meaning which is the uh, Arcadia uh, perspective uh, to which this uh, extension will be applied. So I choose to, to, um, to apply it at the system analysis level. I could uh, do it uh, in several uh, uh, perspectives. I will stay with a system analysis level. Uh, the scope is related to, um, I will need to define uh, to which uh, kind of uh, concept, Arcadia concept, this property applies. So I will say that this um, this uh, this uh, extension will apply to my component changes. Okay, save just for to be sure. And then I will define the uh, the properties that can be applied to uh, to the component exchange. So, for instance, I will say that I'm I would like to um, to know which is the process parameter. Um, that um, that uh, the process parameter that is uh, involved in the uh, in the component exchange, which can be a pressure, um, a flow, temperature, uh, digital status. I mean, any, anything. So, uh, if, uh, as I have different uh, options for this, uh, I will create an enumeration property that I will call um, process parameter. And uh, I would like to choose to be able to choose um, the, the value of this property uh, from a predefined list. So I will create an enumeration uh, that I called process parameter enumeration, and I will define the literals, meaning the kind of uh, pressure parameter that I would like to. Uh, to be able to select. So, for instance, I would say pressure, flow, and uh, temperature. So, then I will be able to uh, to set the um, the type of this property. So, process parameter. I will define the type as an enumeration, and I will be able to define the uh, the default value. Uh, that is presented to the uh, to the user. So I would say temperature, and I also able to uh, to add a description here that will can can be used to uh, to tell the the capilla user uh, the uh, the description about the, the parameter the property uh, they will be uh, setting. So I simply uh, save sure. Um, and that's all. Um, at the end of the day, we will finish uh, with um, I mean a, a domain such as this one. And you see here the process parameter enumeration. It's a richer one than the, the one I showed you just before. Um, this, I created also a um, signal uh, parameter. Uh, which is defined by a signal enumeration, which is um, the kind of signal I will um, uh, I will have in this uh, interface, which can be undefined, uh, 4 to 20 milliamperes, uh, 0 to 10 volts DC, hard or field. I also have uh, some um, little bit advanced uh, features. 
I'm able to define conditional extensions. Uh, so this is, um, I mean, this is an extension which scope is restricted to those component of changes in which the process parameter property is equal to pressure. So meaning that if the user use, uh, shows the pressure, um, the interfaces, the property uh, uh, pressure, and not uh, flow or temperature, uh, in this case, he or she will be able also to specify uh, the maximum and the minimum uh, allowable, allowable val values for the pressure at this point of the industrial process. So, at this point, we have defined a set of properties. Now we will see how to set the values of these properties. So there are at least three ways to set and visualize values on properties. Um, so yeah, first of all, there is a dedicated view. Uh, that is provided to the, by the plugin, by the add-on. Uh, uh, this, um, this view is contextual to the model element that is being selected anywhere in the Capella workbench. And this, will, this view will, be, will allow you to enable or not uh, domain properties to be set for a given element. So I will show you, I hope. So as you see, for instance, in this um, interface, I have this dedicated view, uh, which I uh, used, uh, I uh, open it uh, using the, uh, the views explorer property values. Okay, so I'm able, uh, by, by default, the properties are not applied in the, uh, in the component exchange. I defined that I wanted component exchanges to be, um, to be set uh, these kind of properties. So uh, by default, they are not uh, applied, but I am able to use this view uh, to set the uh, values I want to. For instance, I, here I will select a 4 to 20 milliampers at the signal. And the process parameter, I will say it's uh, pressure. So in this case, if I select pressure, there are other properties that become available for me. Uh, so the minimum value or the maximum value of this pressure. So for instance, I will say 10. And the maximum value, I can say 200. Any value is possible here. And as you see, uh, this, um, this, uh, I, define, I also define the units of this uh, of this property. So how did I do that? Um, when I defined the maximum value, I was able to uh, to define the units of the uh, the values because this is a float property. So it's a, I mean a number, uh, and of course I would ha I would be able to uh, define other values like a boolean or integer or whatever. This is defined in my uh, domain uh, definition model. So the second way to uh, set and visualize the values of properties is uh, directly in diagrams. So uh, this way, uh, it allows you to visualize and edit property values directly in the diagrams and to select which properties are shown for each element. So I will show you how to. Um, okay. Okay, so this is uh, in the palette. Uh, you will find this tool, which is Applied Property Groups. And I will say, show me the properties um, that are uh, related to this component exchange I just said before. So I have two kind of properties that are become available. The first, second, the first one is the process interface, uh, telling, telling us if this is a pressure, flow, or temperature. And the second one is the pressure interface, which is specific to, to in, the, in the case that uh, the, 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 um, the process parameter is pressure. So I select this one, and it becomes available in the diagram. There is a third way I would like to just uh, tell you about. Uh, it's in tables. So in tables, you will be, uh, you will be able to massively change property values. Uh, and I use uh, future tense because um, these kind of tables, tables are not yet available, but will be included in the next version of Capella at the end of the year, uh, which is Capella version uh, 1.3. Of course, 
you are also able to uh, to visualize and set property values using other views of the workbench, uh, such as the uh, Project Explorer or the Semantic Browser. Um, in fact, the properties have been present in Arcadia and Capella Metamodel for a long time, so most of the views and add-ons support them quite well. So at the end of the day, uh, in your uh, system analysis uh, level uh, perspective, uh, at this stage, the ICS architect and process engineering have a shared understanding of the needs that the ICS shall cover. So now we are going to focus on two of these needs. Uh, the first one is the injection of boric acid when the pressure of the heat exchanger exceeds the maximum allowable value. So this is one of the properties we had just set. Uh, and this is the, um, the blue uh, functional chain that is shown in this, uh, in this diagram. Um, okay, and the second one is the injection when the mechanical controllers of the boiler are lost. Remember that there are uh, embedded mechanical controllers in the boiler. Uh, so this is the red functional chain uh, that is represented here. Of course, uh, we could have defined many other properties, uh, for instance, on functional chains. Uh, to specify the execution time of the functional chain or their availability requirements. But for now, we will stay with only these properties in the process domain, and we will focus now on the solution perspectives in the, of the Arcadia, met, uh, the Arcadia metric. So the first Arcadia perspective dedicated to the definition of the system architecture, and the only one we will cover during this webinar is the logical architecture on which we will define how the system will work to fulfill the stakeholders' expectations. In our ICS example, uh, we will assume that this is not the first time the ICS architects develop such a system, and that through the, the years they have defined some kind of reference architecture that has been proven in several projects. Uh, so it's the one shown in the, uh, in the, in the slides. Uh, the architecture defines the main subsystems that we model as, log as logical components, and the communication that are allowed between them. For instance, uh, the instrumentation and pre-processing system is responsible of the acquisition of instrumentation signals, the actuators control system manage the actuators, valves and pumps and others, uh, the process and safety control systems are where calculations take place, take place. safety control systems uh, handle calculations that are critical to the safety of the process and note that communication from operational um, to, uh, to safety system is not allowed. Only communication from safety to process control, operational control systems in order to reinforce the independency of the safety functions. Uh, finally, the operational and emergency supervision systems are the human machine interfaces with the plant operator. So this reference architecture can be instantiated in our ICS project. Uh, so in uh, this case, the interfaces of the component exchange we defined just before, uh, with external equipment and stakeholders identified before, are delegated to the subsystems. For instance, the interfaces with the heat exchanger are uh, um, delegated to the instrumentation preprocessing system, system because it's a pressure signal. Uh, the boiler has a status of the mechanical controller, which is an actuator, and so is the actuator control system that we handle at the first, at the first time this, um, this signal. Uh, the boric acid injection system uh, has inputs and outputs to the uh, actuator's control system, so are mainly pumps. Uh, and the plant operator uh, will, uh, will have uh, interactions with the supervision systems. So at this time, uh, uh, th there is a major concern to deal with on these kind of systems, uh, which is safety. Uh, the ICS shall ensure that when an operational problem occurs, the equipment is put into a safe state to avoid adverse safety, health, and environmental consequences. A safe state is a process condition whether the process is operating or shut down, such, a, such that a hazardous event cannot occur. So safety analysis performed by safety engineers drives to the definition of a safety category for each function and each component of the system. The safety categories and their meaning may strongly vary from an industrial domain to another. They may be called safety integrity level or SEAL, automotive safety integrity level, ACL for our automotive domain, 
safety categories in nuclear domain, etc. There are a lot more safety related properties that we could, would like to add to components and functions, such as the defense line, seismic requirements and others, but we will say only with this safety category now. Uh, so this time we will not develop the properties domain ourselves, but we will import an existing one, as we just did before, uh, that has been used in a past project. So, go back to my, um, my Capella uh, environment. So I have this, uh, th my domain, and I will import another one, which is the safety domain. So my safety domain, there are already a set of uh, properties that are defined. Slides. So uh, we define safety categories. We define category one, category two, category one being the most critical one, category two, and uncategorized functions and components. We defined a safety category extension uh, which scope its only logical uh, architecture, um, and we define three uh, kind of uh, Arcadia concepts that uh, to which uh, we will able to apply this extension. The first one is the logical component. Uh, the second one are functions, and the third one is a functional chain. And there is a particular um, a particularity uh, regarding these uh, this, uh, this functional chains uh, properties. We are able to uh, to apply safety categories only to those functional chains that uh, which name start with SFC. So, for instance, back to my uh, Capella environment, this is done here. I will define an attribute rule uh, to my uh, to my um, to my E class, so to the a conditional. Uh, application of the of the extension and I will define I mean it could be defined regarding the name or other uh, attributes of the concept and there are other conditions as equal different contain starts and ends so I will be able I only will be able to define the safety category to those functional chains which name start with SFC uh, characters So, um, until now we have covered the specification and the setting of properties. Uh, the third feature of the PMNT tool is the possibility to change the graphical style of elements according to the values of the properties that you have set. So, uh, you, currently you are able to, do, um, to change the style of, of borders, of uh, elements, uh, labels, and backgrounds. And you can do it in or to on, on several um, uh, concepts uh, in Arcadia. So spanning from uh, operational analysis concepts to uh, physical uh, architecture or architecture concepts. So how, how do you do that? Um, the, the first thing that has been to done has to, has to be done uh, is to define the style in the domain model. So uh, styles can be defined for the values that the properties can take. So uh, enumeration literals, numerical range, uh, string values. Let me show you how it's done. So for instance, here I define a set of values for uh, my uh, safety. My functions are components. Uh, in, uh, with uh, safety category of one, I defined that my background color will be red. And I will define um, white labels. Uh, for my safety category uh, two, I will define a background color, um, yellow background color, and uncategorized, uh, I can define a gray, gray uh, background. I'm also able to uh, define conditional uh, styles. So for instance, here I defined in my previous uh, pressure interface uh, extension, I defined that when minimal, minimum pressure value is a negative one, 
in any case between uh, minus uh, 1000 and minus 0.1, uh, I will change the background color and the label color. This is quite practical to, uh, to uh, easily identify uh, errors or uh, mistakes of the of Capella users. The second step is to select which uh, property value uh, will be displayed in the diagrams. So to do so, you need to activate the diagram style layer and then select which properties you want to display in the diagram. Uh, let me show you how it's done in my uh, Capella environment. So um, first thing is to open my, um, my architecture. And then I will um, activate my diagram styler layer. There is a new tool that appears in the palette, uh, which is the Shoes Properties tool. And uh, it allows me to uh, to select the uh, the properties that I want to uh, to show in my uh, in my diagram. So there are the two process domains I've defined before uh, that are available. I will choose my safety category, and then the the color of the logical component change according to the definition file uh, I uh, defined just uh, just before. So uh, obviously, if I change my background color. Uh, for the safety category one uh, components, uh, I will able to um, to see uh, the result simply in my diagram. So this, I change the I kind of change the colors, and if I change um, the safety category of one uh, component, for instance, this one safety control system, I would say it's not longer no longer safety category one, but safety category two the uh, graphical style, style change accordingly. So by following these two steps, uh, well, that, that's all. It's uh, the two steps I need to, uh, to flow to, um, to change the graphical style in my diagram. So of course you can mix um, you can mix the way you show the, the properties um, so as you remember, functions may also have safety categories. Uh, so we can also color them accordingly. We can, of course, mix in different ways to visualize the property values. For instance, here I use colors and the property values box that I showed you uh, before. Uh, and note that in our example, functions also have different uh, safety categories. And in particular, calculation function of the functional chain representing the injection of boric acid when pressure of the heat exchanger is high are category two, the yellow ones. And the function operating the injection pumps are also category two. So this one was this one, and the operation of the pumps was this one. So we are now able to allocate uh, the functions in our ICS architecture. So we start with the injection at high pressure, a functional chain. And then we continue with the uh, injection at uh, lost of lost lost of uh, mechanical controllers. So the, the change of the graphical style uh, allows us to notice right away that there is a safety category one function allocated to a safety category two uh, component. So if this case is not allowed by um, allocation rules. Uh, in, in our domain, you can change the allocation right away. So you can change, allocate it rather to, uh, to the uh, safety control system, which is a category one system, and the architecture is all good. So uh, this drives us to the positioning of PVMT with regards to Capella Studio. Capella Studio uh, allows you to define extensions for Capella, and it's way more powerful than PVMT as it permits to perform calculations based on the state of the architecture, uh, to define new concepts and relations between concepts, to define their look and feel uh, on existing diagrams, and to create new kinds of diagrams. So it's a very powerful tool. Uh, PVMT provides you limited extensions, uh, but does not require any programming skills, which is a nice thing. Uh, and so can be also used to, uh, for prototyping your viewpoints before industrializing them. As I said before, PVMT is based on the Arcadia property concept, which has been in Capella for a long time. So you are able to exploit the properties that you have defined. Uh, when you export the model on HTML format using the XHTML add-on, 
you will see the property values and the graphical styles you have set at the time you do the export. You can also generate Word documents using M2Doc add-on with the coloring you defined before. You can also use PDMT with the Team4 Capella add-on, uh, which allow your teams to access simultaneously the Capella model. Uh, and of course, you can mix PVMT and Capella Studio when defining new extensions to Capella. And there are many other ways to exploit the properties. For instance, you may want to define new roles to, val new roles to validate your architectures that exploit the property values. It's also possible for you. So what are the next steps? Well, how, how do you get started with PVMT? Um, this is a summary of the features, mainly three. Define your own domain-specific properties set properties values on Capella model elements, change the graphical aspect of elements according to their properties values. So three main features. And what's next? Uh, well, download it, use it. Uh, the add-on is uh, available at the Capella add-ons page, which is only shown here. Uh, install it as a drop-in, follow the instructions in the readme file, read it. Read it. Uh, there are two um, two folders, you need to put these folders in the drop-in uh, uh, Capella folder. Uh, right now, the um, PDMT is compatible with Capella 1.2.x, version 1.2, uh, and the version which is comparable will, will be comparable with next version 1.3 will be developed next year. Uh, right now, only uh, Windows uh, operational system has been tested. Uh, then you will want to share your experience. So you can use the Capella forum to share your experience and your domain models if you want to. Um, there is also an embedded help of the tool in, in Capella. Uh, and a PDMT evolutions follow an internal roadmap. So you can find specific development, of, of course, if you want. But uh, it has an own internal roadmap which includes uh, new views uh, to display all elements that have a uh, property value applied or that can be applied on other future um, developments. And next, you may want to contribute to this tool. So if you want to, uh, to extend this tool to your, uh, to, your, uh, to your use cases and uh, um, expand the, uh, the features of the tool, well, you can contact us. Uh, to the email address that is shown in uh, this uh, slide. To end up, if, um, before closing the webinar, I will, would like to thank the Capella development teams of the French branch of Defense and Mission Systems Thales Business Unit. They have really made a great job on PDMT. And if uh, you want to know more on Arcadia and Capella, uh, you may want to visit, visit the Capella website, uh, check out past webinars and more videos at the uh, Polarsis Capella YouTube channel, and read Arcadia and Capella books, which are in English and French uh, editions. So uh, this is the end of the webinar. Sorry, I took like two minutes, two more minutes, and it was a lot to me. Uh, so I'm open to questions if you have.